is up guys welcome back to the channel for another episode of retro reviews uh, today I'm venturing into the music realm okay I I've touched on it before I, I said I wanted to you know explore and do uh, music album reviews uh, just you know some share some of the artists that I I'm a fan of and uh, and the albums or and songs that I enjoy so um, so yeah, this is my first uh, go at it here. So we'll see how it goes. You know, with music, you got to be very uh, careful, I guess. You can't like play too much of it, of the you know the actual um, songs. So um, from what I've seen, you can play like small clips, and like they don't, you know, they don't. I guess don't care about that. But you can't like I can't play the full even a full song, right? Because you know, people that do reviews of, of songs okay like those like I've seen a lot of reaction videos uh, they have to pause it some part way through the song and they have to talk a little bit about it and then you know they resume it so that's by design right so if, if they they've got it down to where they can um, you know do that and you know don't get like a copyright claim or anything so I'm gonna uh, attempt it here and see how it goes, and if it goes well, then I guess it will be. It can be something we can, um, you know, I can pursue going forward. Uh, but yeah, so so to kick things off here, I'm going with one, one of my favorite artists from the '80s, a flock of seagulls. But I'm actually going with their album, "The Light at the End of the World," which was released in 1995 so a lot of people you know may not know about this album because um, a lot of people think flock of seagulls I mean they they really are the ultimate you know one of the ultimate 80s bands right I mean you think 80s when you hear flock of seagulls with you know especially you know the hits I ran um, or uh, wishing if I had a photograph of you a space age love song you know, they you know they had some good tunes in the '80s. I, I have a lot of their '80s stuff, and I I I, uh, I dig it. Um, and I have seen this band, right? I wouldn't say they're my favorite band uh, of all time, but I really do like them. And I have seen them live in concert uh, three separate times. So I guess that uh, kind of speaks for itself, right? Uh, I've never seen another artist three times. Um, I mean, I haven't went to a huge amount of concerts, okay, over the years. I mean, well, I remember going like 10 years between concerts. Uh, the last one I went to was in 2017. Uh, before that, the previous one was 2007, okay? So, so yeah, after 10 years, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, let's, I'm ready for it. Let's, let's do, it's been a while. Let's do a concert, right? <clears throat> but yeah, I've, I have seen these guys live three times. They they always did a good show. <clears throat> but yeah, this particular album, like I said, it was released in 1995. So yeah, the, this is not the band's you know original lineup. It was um, basically it was Mike Score, which is you know the lead singer, and um, he also does the keyboards, right? So he basically kept the name of a flock of seagulls and you know basically or assembled a, a new band okay so he was the only so Mike Score was the only original uh, band member from the 80s on this album okay so he kinda kept the name and just assembled a new band K kinda like Roland Dorzabal did with Tears for Fears when you know uh, when Roland and Kurt Smith had their they had a falling out and they almost went basically a decade without talking but during that decade uh, you know, Roland kept the Tears for Fears name and even made a couple albums, you know, even though Kurt was not there. Now, Kurt did come back and they reunited and, you know, that's another story for another video. But, but yeah, uh, this is a good album. I really dig it, you know. Um, I believe I bought this at my local record shop, you know, back in the 90s when it came out. I think it was called Record Town. Um, yeah, they would sell... So, you know, at the time, yeah, they were selling CDs and still cassettes. Um, so, yeah, I, I got this locally at my uh, local store. So, yeah, I, I have had this actual copy 
of this CD for since 1995. So yeah, pretty pretty cool, huh? So here's the uh, here's what the CD itself looks like. Kind of kind of a a different uh, color different color palette there. I'm trying to I'm try <laughs> hope you guys can see that. Kind of a different color palette for a CD, but you know it's cool. <clears throat> but yeah, um, so let's uh, got the the insert booklet here, and so yeah, this was kind of like this was kind of the cool thing about uh, getting CDs is the, this little booklet. You know, this is like again before the internet, so you know it, it uh, like here's the so the song names and description. Here's like. There's like a photo of uh, his new band. You know, that's one of the guys in the band. So they did a group photo. Then I think, yeah. Then they did. Then they did pictures individually. So there's that guy. And then yeah, Mike. There's Mike at the end. So he did his other bandmates first, and then he was at the end. So, yeah, this, um, I really like this album. It sounds a little different from their 80s stuff, but not drastically different. Like, you, like, listening to it, you're like, okay, that, that sounds like a flock of seagulls. Okay, I, I can, that sounds like them, you know, because they just had a sound, like, very heavy on the keyboards. I love, you know, that's, I love synthesizers and keyboards, so that's one of the reasons I like, I love this band, is I just love the, all the interesting sounds and melodies and combination things they can do with it. Uh, you know, they can pretty much sound like a, a whole band is playing when it's just this machine. I mean, I, I guess I dig that. I love electronics, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, to me, I guess I, I like this album a lot because, like I said, it, there is a, it sounds a little different from the 80s stuff, but not drastically, as far as, like, I feel they still stuck to the roots, and basically, you know, Mike, um, still, he, he still stuck to who he was and who Flock of Seagulls is in his mind. Um, unlike, I'll just use Tears for Fears for an example, right? Their, their album, Songs from the Big Chair, probably my favorite album in history. I uh, love it. Their follow-up album to that, The Seeds of Love, was just such a drastic change. It was like, it was so, I mean, I understand you want to do different things, but it's like, it was such a drastic change, it was like, who's this band? You know, and then you had to look at the, like, so I, you had to look at it like, this is Tears for Fears? The seeds of out the seeds of love is a different a decent album, but I personally I would have preferred they kind of like would have kept on the track of songs from the big chair, kind of like stayed on that. It just sounds so different. It don't even sound like the same band, you know. It's I was yeah overall I was just initially I was disappointed in the seeds of love, but it's kind of grew on me a little bit, you know. I guess it's just. It's an album I can listen to if I'm in a, a certain mood. Like if I need to, if I just want to chill out and mellow out, then I guess that album can, you know, suits, suits that kind of mood. But yeah, that's why I like the Flock of Se this one album so much. Is they, they he Mike Score stayed true to who he was and who a Flock of Seagulls, what they sound like. So yeah. So without further delay. Let's turn the camera around. We're going to play it on the Sega CD here. And I'll give you a little sampling of some tracks. So this is the other cool thing about the, uh, the Sega CD is you can play... CDs on it. <laughs> so yeah, here's as you can see, there is 12, tra uh, 12 tracks. Uh, total runtime is there is the 58 minutes and 47 seconds. So I'm going to um, 
play a few uh, sampling tracks for you guys and uh, see what you think. Here, I'm, I may have to pause it and, um, you know, restart. But at least I can give you like a sampling so you can have an idea of the sound. So this is the first track on the album. It's called Burning Up. So I'm going to maybe play a few uh, clips from this song. There's there's three there's three songs on here on this album that I, I really uh, like so I guess I have three favorites on this album. The first one is Burn Up, so it's to me it's a good good uh, song to kick the album off. So yeah, that's the cool thing about the Sega CD here. It's here you can see the, um, it's basically like your uh, player, you know. You got play, pause, stop. The auto search means skip to the next song or previous song. And then here you got fast forward and rewind. And of course over here is uh, eject. So yeah, I kind of dig this, you know, for playing CDs on. It's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty cool. No, a good beat, a good rhythm, some good drums, bass guitar, electric guitar, keyboards. That is, that's the music I dig, okay? That's like my favorite. That's my bread and butter when it comes to music. It's like, you throw, you got all those elements, you throw the, you have all those elements in there, and you can put it together nicely where it's got, a, you know, some good rhythm and good melodies, I'm gonna I'm gonna dig what you're doing. You know, I'm gonna enjoy it. So yeah, I just thought I would stop it there so you guys get an idea of uh, the first track, Burning Up. It's um, pretty rocky, you know, I like it. Um, it's got some good, uh, to me it's got a good beat, good synthesizers, good guitars. I mean, that's, that's, that's music I like, you know. <clears throat> So we're going to move up to track five. This one's called Ordinary Man.
So, this song, Walking in the Garden, I believe, I think this, this may be my favorite song on the album, because of this, man, the sounds they came up with in this song. I mean, the drums, the, the, the synthesizers, the guitar, the rhythm, the, the melody that they I would say, yeah, this is my favorite song on the album just because of just how they constructed it and just how it flows and comes together. I mean, to me, this song is probably, it may sound weird, you know, it sound, may, may be a surprise, but this may be my favorite song of A Flock of Seagulls, even, even um, you know, over their 80s stuff, even over I Ran, which is a great song. I love I Ran so far away. But this song here, the way they, I mean, did you, it's, that's, this song, it started out like creepy, eerie, right? Almost like a horror movie. And then, it, then he really dug into the, to the keyboards, heavy, it's got some heavy keyboards in this song. And then, then, then upcoming, you're going to hear, it's like it goes, dun, dun, that's like the heavy keyboard I'm talking about. But then, then he does like a melody on the keyboard here. I'm going to play it right now. So you see what I meant by that melody of the keyboard. I mean, yeah, that keyboard rhythm there, that just takes me away. That just takes me to another place almost. If you played this in the dark, right? Let's say you lay, laying in bed, turn the lights out and play this. It's like, man, that yeah, that could that could definitely take you to another almost another world. It's like transporting you out of this place and it's like very like spacey like a space age feel to it right no pun intended there with you know <laughs> in reference to their song space age love song but definitely i mean to me beautiful it's like a it's a masterpiece i yeah i love this song so i'm i'm going to play one more section of where this guitar riff man this guy gets into to the guitar and it's like, it's freaking awesome. That's what I'm saying. That's why I love this song so much. It's like, you got the heavy, the heavy keyboards at the beginning and throughout the song. That you know the da da. Then, then the rhythm of, the, then the rhythm keyboard that I just played. Then now we're gonna throw in this freaking guy getting down on the guitar, electric guitar. It's like, <laughs> yeah, this song, this song is a masterpiece. That's. That's just, that's just my opinion here. I'm just going to pause it here because this is probably my longest clip I'm going to play, but not only guitar, but it's like the the guitar and keyboard combined. He's got a like a, he's got his like fingers down on a few keys in the background, like this 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 deep underlining this undertone of the keyboard. It's like like a, almost like a a constant, right? That the keyboard is like a constant in the background, but then and then the guitar combined with it. I love this song. It's freaking epic. I'm sorry. <laughs> so let's continue. <laughs> So 
that's those are the clips I um, I'm going to play. So let's go ahead and hit stop. Um, yeah, that's I just wanted to play a portion of those three songs. Those are my three favorite songs from the album. I mean, the other songs are good too, you know. But these are just the three that are my favorites on the album, and so I thought it would give you um, give you guys a good good feel for the album and, and, and the sound that they created, you know, that Mike Score uh, created with with his new bandmates, okay? And even though, you know, he had new bandmates, to me, you know, Mike Score was always the, basically, he was the, um, you know, he was the conductor on the train or the, uh, the engineer, whatever you call it. He was the one that, he was like the driving force of A Flock of Seagulls, okay? I mean, he was pretty much the songwriter and the lead singer and the lead on keyboards, okay? So, not to, not to take anything away from those other guys, but they pretty much were like, you know, I'm, I'm going to say, like, Mike Score was like the conductor of an orchestra, right? He kind of was like the driving force. And, you know, yeah, the other bandmates, they play a part. They, um, you know, they're like a tool in the machine, right? So... You know, I, I guess that's how I'm trying to describe it. So to me, even though he had new bandmates, Mike Score, he was still able to create a sound and a feel, and it, and it still felt like a flock of seagulls. And yeah, my hats off to to Mike. You know, pulling, you know, ma uh, making this album happen. You know, uh, there's a lot that goes into an album being released. It's like not like you know, an easy thing. There, you ha like a lot of things have to happen and come together at the same time for an album to be released. Right? There's there's a lot of moving parts involved, and just one just one little hiccup can just throw things off. It can delay it, or sometimes even prevent the album from ever being released. Which is sad, you know, because it's like. Unfortunately, in this world, there's a lot of uh, red tape, a lot of legal stuff, you know, laws and rights and who's got the rights to this. And it's like, it's ridiculous, really. I wish it wasn't the so. I mean, for example, like Friday the 13th, I, you know, I've, I was talking to someone about it and how, like, I guess the... Different people are battling in court now who's got the rights to make the movie. Because, you know, 2009, there was a remake done. But they're ta they're fighting over who has the rights to do it. So, yeah. So, you know, and the, and, and the, and the, the bottom line is the fans really are the ones that suffer over, over certain people squabbling about details and... You know, basically, what it comes down to is money. Because whoever has the rights and makes the movie, that they're the one that's going to get the money. So, yep, money and all that can really throw a kink into movies and, um, you know, music albums being released. But enough about that. I wanted, uh, you know, I just wanted to touch on it, like, of how it, it, it does take a lot to release a, an album. And, uh, you know, I appreciate what Mike Score did with this. And, you know, I'll forever enjoy this album. You know, it's it's one I can, you know, pop in my CD player and, and enjoy every time, at, at any given time. So, let me know in the comments below, have you ever heard of a, number one, have you ever heard of a flock of seagulls? Okay. Um, if you... I mean, they're, like I said, they're a famous 80s band. You know, they were they were considered a new wave, all right? A synth, you know, like a synth pop new wave band. Uh, they were from Liverpool, England, you know, um, which I believe is where the Beatles came from. But, yeah, like they had the hits, their 80s hits included Iran, uh, Wishing If I Had a Photograph of You, Space Age Love Song, and, and here's a little bit of a trivia. Believe it or not, they actually won a Grammy for a song that had no lyrics in it. It was called DNA. And it was just, it was just purely instrumental. Pure, purely 
you know, drums, keyboards, guitar, bass guitar. That's it. No, no lyrics at all. They want a Grammy for that song. So it's like, so that, that really to me is further proof, okay, because just to put this out there, I never was a big country music fan. Now, the country music fans out there that would uh, maybe attempt to convert me or make me understand, their their argument always was the it always came back to the lyrics and that what, but to the point where they're like, well, but it tells a good story. My response to that is, um. I don't listen to music to hear a story. I listen to music because it's pleasing to the ear. I enjoy the sounds. Okay? I enjoy the different sounds that they create with their different instruments. So, if it sounds good, has a good beat, and a good rhythm, and it's got those, you know, like electric guitar, bass guitar, keyboards, drums, I'm in. I'm not a big fan of like acoustic guitars or like like back in the you know the in the 90s or whatever I remember that MTV would do these unplugged versions you know like where they was using simply a, an acoustic guitar so so no yeah they would take out the electric guitar take out the keyboard and do this acoustic unplugged version and I to me I'm like okay I don't want to listen to the neutered version of the song. Okay, basically, that, to me, that's what they, that's what that is. They neuter the song, and it's like, I, to me, it sounded like crap. It's just like, it sounded weak. It sounds diluted. I don't like that. I like, you know, the song in its original form. Leave it alone. Again, with the movies, leave it alone. Okay? It was fine. And, and great, not just fine, but it was great as an, in its original form. Leave it, don't bother it, don't mess with it. But when they do that acoustic crap and unplugged, it's like, yeah, it's you recognize the song because the lyrics are still there, but it's like a watered-down version, a watered-down diluted, and it's like, I would pick the original version every time. Just simply because of, it's it just simply sounds better, right? And so yeah, that would be my response. Is I I don't listen to music for to hear a story. Okay, it can have a great story, but if it sounds like crap, I don't want to listen to that. I don't want to listen to it. I mean that's the I I, I was like if I want a story, okay, I will either watch a movie or read a book. That's 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 what I go to if I want a story, not a song, not music. So yeah. So DNA had no lyrics. So therefore I yeah, there's really no story to that song, right? <laughs> it can't be uh, other than the the interesting sounds of the song. That's all that is. It's just the the sound. And so that's what music is for me. It's like, does it sound good? You know, and you know, I, so not not to harp or pick on country music, but just some of the stuff, some of the lyrics they put in country music, though, it's depressing. Okay, like a lot of the music I like, the lyrics they put in it, it's almost like it's not just straightforward, black and white. The lyrics can be interpreted different ways for different people. But in country music, it is just so plain, plain Jane, basic, where, yeah, you can't interpret it any other way. It's that That's what it is. Uh, for example, I, I don't know what song it was or who the artist was, but I remember, and it felt like listening to a story, because, but... Literally, one of the lyrics was, he went out on his porch to get his newspaper. So, you're going to, as you're writing a song, you're like, okay, I need to, um, I'm writing this song, went out to porch to get my newspaper. 
it's like, it's like, okay, you know, that's nice, I guess, but that's like a very simple routine daily thing millions of people do, and you're like writing a song and releasing it and want to play it on the radio and want people to buy this? You want people to buy that? Pay money for that? Come on, man. That, that deserves a come on, man. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, that's kind of how I feel about music. That's why I love the 80s so much. Is just the, the interesting sounds they came up with. You know, the sounds and the rhythms. I don't think their, their music will ever have another time period like that. Because if you hear an 80s song, you're like, yep, that's 80s. But if you... But if you hear a song from 2010, do you automatically say, yep, 2010? Probably not. You're like, you're going to be like, when when was that made? Let's Google it. We got, got to Google it, right? <laughs> so, so yeah, that's why I love bands from the 80s. And also, like like this album here, um, stuff they did after that, you know, once the 80s was, was past us and we went into the 90s, and, you know, some of these bands were still making music. They didn't quit when the 80s ended, right? So, you know, like, yeah, like Flock of Seagulls, Tears for Fears, uh, Depeche Mode, Human, uh, U2, Duran Duran, like, they kept, like, they kept making music, okay? Now, a lot of their stuff, you know, like, some of the stuff did change a little bit, but, yeah, I still, still dig those artists even today, so. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video, but tell me in the comments, have you heard of A Flock of Seagulls? Are you familiar with their 80s stuff? Have you heard of this album, The Light at the End of the World? Um, I, I dig it. I love this album. You know, I, I love it just as, I dig it just as much as their 80s uh, stuff. Uh, but what did you think of the album of, you know, the tracks that I played, the clips, what did you think of what you heard? If if you you know if you were not fam familiar with this album, what did you think of uh, what you heard? Did it sound like them? Did it did it sound pretty cool? Or or did you not care for it? Just you know w either way, uh, whatever you th whatever your thoughts are, put it in the comments below, okay? And, uh, and let me know if there's any other artists or albums that you would like me to uh, review in the future and and. Uh, you know, and if I if I have access to it, I, I can uh, check it out. If, but if this is your first time to the channel, tap that red subscribe button down there. And then the bell next to it, ding, ding. And that way you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And if you if, if you did like this video and you, and you want to see me do more videos like this, uh, give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out a lot. It helps this video out a lot. And it lets other people know that you enjoyed this. You're enjoying this content of, of what I'm doing here at Retro Reviews. If you give me a thumbs up, that would be retro rad. I'd be much obliged if you would uh, do that. So until next time, guys, keep it retro.